Morning San Antonio starts right now. It's not fun to drive in the snow. I bet not. I mean, in the blizzard, the worst. Millions of Americans are hitting the roads and airports ahead of the holiday weekend. Why the National Weather Service says this once-in-a-generation storm is already causing problems. It's not here yet. Outside with live cam as we take a look. 46 degrees, and if you're doubting whether this Arctic air is truly going to make its way into Texas, wait till you hear what's happening in Amarillo as we speak. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. It is December 22nd. And we've got Tiffany Huertas with us this morning. Hi, Tiff. Hi, good morning. Merry I'm so happy Christmas. to be here. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Those shocking numbers in Amarillo. Yeah, listen to this. And if you're uh, math challenged like I am, uh, Justin is about to do the math for us. Yeah, there are fronts and then there are fronts. fronts. And uh, Amarillo in one hour went from 41 to nine. They're currently in the single digits. And that cold air is plunging south. So we're going to show you a lot of temperature maps today, and they're going to be changing by the minute. So you got to stick with us. Uh, we'll be updating every time we do the weather. You'll see the numbers pretty much update. I want to show you the numbers up north. These are pretty astounding. It's negative 19 in Bismarck, but the wind chill is negative 44. In Casper, the wind chill and temperature negative 42. Not a lot of wind there, but bitterly cold. And then as you get down towards Amarillo, well, that's just updated. They're down to two now. Negative 24, the wind chill there. Lubbock, it has just hit their 15, negative five wind chill for them. Now, as we look down into Texas, we're sitting at a balmy 47, at least comparatively speaking. Uh, 55 in Del Rio, 54 in Laredo. That front makes it here just after lunch today. So let me give you the hourly forecast. 45 at 7 o'clock, we're probably still cloudy, mostly cloudy through the morning. Temperatures will eventually make their way up to around 60 or so. That'll feel warm compared to what will happen after that. Temperatures as that front comes through tumble quickly. 51, 2 o'clock, 45 at 3 p.m. Then we're down in the 30s by uh, the afternoon and probably below freezing by the evening hours. There is a wind advisory that will go into effect noon to midnight, gusts to 45 miles per hour. That's the other component to this. It is going to be very windy. That puts wind chills in the single digits. So we have a wind chill warning that starts at 6 p.m. this evening for San Antonio. And then we also have a hard freeze warning. No surprise there. Lows will be in the teens Friday and Saturday morning and in the 20s Sunday morning, Christmas morning. So a lot to talk about. We're going to continue to update those temperature maps, as we said, and more on this cold front coming up in just a bit, guys. Thanks, Justin. Flights around the country are already being canceled due to weather here in San Antonio. Passengers are being asked to check their flights before heading to the airport. As of this morning, most flights are on time so far. Airport officials still suggest arriving at least two hours before your boarding time. Remember to print or download boarding passes early and be prepared for potential delays. You can monitor flight updates on the airport social media site and website. VIA is also keeping an eye on the temperatures. All VIA services will operate as usual as long as the weather cooperates. If that changes, VIA will announce it online. Beginning today, anyone traveling to or from a warming center can ride for free. But you have to tell the bus operator or the VIA Trans reservation agent that uh, that's where you're going or leaving. If you have questions or need more information, call 210-362-2020. And this morning, 215 million Americans are under some sort of weather alert. Blizzard conditions in the Midwest and a storm front that will send temperatures plunging after heavy rains in the Northeast. As ABC's Andrea Fujii reports, more governors are declaring a state of emergency. This is an absolute whiteout. The National Weather Service calls it a once in a generation storm, and it's already crippling Christmas travel. More than 200 miles of Interstate 90 in South Dakota is closed. And in Chicago, people are being warned to avoid the roads altogether. It's not fun to drive in the snow. I bet not. I mean, in the blizzard, the worst. Blizzard conditions, ice, and flooding are expected from the plains and the Midwest to the East Coast. Temperatures are plunging, dropping 32 degrees in just nine minutes in the Rockies. The life-threatening cold will soon reach as far south as Texas. One in Dallas, minus 26 in St. Louis for a for a uh, wind chill. And come Saturday morning, Christmas Eve morning, those numbers will be spreading over towards the East Coast. So nearly the entire country well below zero for wind chills. Airlines are already canceling more than 1,000 flights for today. Chicago's O'Hare with the most cancellations overnight, followed by Denver. Tired, stressed, hungry. 
just hopeless, honestly. There's snow in Kansas City waiting for us, so we are a little bit nervous about getting there. The delays and cancellations only adding to the chaos at airports packed with holiday travelers. And in California, Allegiant Airlines is trying to reunite 44 passengers with their bags after the airline lost all of them. Andrea Fujii, ABC News, New York. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky told cheering U.S. legislators during a wartime visit to the nation's capital that against all odd, his country still stands. Zelensky thanked Americans yesterday for helping to fund the war effort and what he calls an investment in global security and democracy. Zelensky called the tens of billions of dollars the U.S. military and economic assistance provided over the past year vital to Ukraine's efforts to beat back Russia. Congress is expected to vote this week on a fresh spending package that includes nearly $45 billion in additional emergency assistance to Ukraine. The FTX crypto exchange founder boarded a flight in the Bahamas last night for extradition to the U.S. Sam Bankman-Fried was arrested in the Bahamas more than a week ago. Bankman-Fried oversaw his cryptocurrency investment company from a luxury compound in the Caribbean country. Next, a judge here in the U.S. will hold a bail hearing on charges for what prosecutors describe as one of the biggest financial frauds in American history. Meanwhile, two of Bankman Freed's top executives have pleaded guilty to multiple counts of conspiracy and fraud in the crypto scheme. To Arizona now, a pursuit involving police ends in a rollover crash south of Phoenix. Check out the video. Police were chasing due to possibly being stolen. Marked vehicles made numerous attempts to stop the driver, and at one point the vehicle picked up speed and went off off the roadway. The vehicle lost control and rolled several times before coming to arrest. There it goes in the desert. Two people were in the vehicle at the time of the crash or were taken into custody. Department of Public Safety says they will be checked out by medical personnel for any injuries before being booked into jail. Time now, 437, 46 degrees outside. Still ahead, how a small twist on some of your favorite holiday meals can actually make them a little healthier. And up next, the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame has revealed its list of candidates for the class of 2023. And there's some familiar faces representing San Antonio on the list. Let's check Transguide right now, see how things are looking. We should have very light traffic for the rest of the week for most of the greater San Antonio metropolitan area. A few folks getting a jump start on the day or maybe coming home from overnight shifts at I-10 and Hackberry. And outside with live cam, a nice 46 degrees. That strong cold front coming in in a few hours. Justin has your full forecast coming up. Big, I mean, big announcement by the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame as the organization revealed its list of candidates for the class of 23. It includes first-time nominees Greg Popovich, four-time NBA champ Tony Parker, and former Spur Pau Gasol. Pop, a five-time NBA champ and still current head coach of the Spurs, is eligible. That's because, according to the Hall of Fame's own rules, if he has coached for 25 years on the high school, college, or pro level, then he can be inducted. Pop has done... That just with the Spurs alone as their head coach. It can also include former Spurs assistant Becky Hammond back on the list as, of candidates as a player after she'd been inducted into the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame. We just saw Manu Ginobili inducted this past September in Springfield. The finalists will be announced February 17th, their NBA All-Star Weekend. The class of 2023 will be announced Saturday, April 1st during the NCAA Final Four in Houston. Congratulations to UTSA head football coach Jeff Trailer, who welcomes 22 early signees as part of his 2023 recruiting class yesterday. Among them, three running backs, Rocco Griffin, a transfer from Vanderbilt, Robert Henry from Jones College in Mississippi, and Brandon High, two-time first-team all-district from Conroe. And how about another left-handed quarterback, Owen McCown, a transfer from Colorado. I started four games at Colorado. We're also excited about Jackson Gilkey. These guys aren't dumb. They know Frank's going to graduate, believe it or not, one day. And uh, they know we've got a really good thing going here. We throw the ball indoors, and we like to throw it a lot. You know, we, we snap the ball approximately 80 times a game. So you can have some really good statistics. And uh, obviously my relationship there helped, but I've made no promises to anybody. The only promise is Frank Harris is a starting quarterback. And the day he graduates, there'll be an open competition. 
Texas Longhorns boast the number four overall recruiting class of 2023 after they were the land the biggest recruit in the Steve Sarkeesian area and quarterback Arch Manning. He's considered to be the number one quarterback recruit in the nation and is the nephew of both Peyton and Eli Manning. He threw for almost 8,600 yards, 115 touchdowns and another 25 touchdowns on the ground, breaking Peyton's record for TDs and Eli's record for passing. Now he'll battle Quinn Ewers for the starting job. Longhorns also landed the number one linebacker in the nation, Anthony Hill, after he originally committed to Texas A&M. And that's a look at morning sports. Time now, 442, 47 degrees outside. Pies, cookies, and holiday drinks. Chances are you'll be having some of these items pretty soon. If you don't want to skip out on those delicious seasonal flavors, we have some easy swaps that'll still feel festive and healthy. And a holiday miracle 35 miles from the Arctic Circle. Up next, how a community teamed up to help a baby who needed an emergency flight to a hospital. Residents of a small village in Alaska teamed up to help a baby who needed an emergency flight to a hospital. ABC's Andrea Fujii has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, a holiday miracle 35 miles from the Arctic Circle. Calvin Moto, the only maintenance operator for the tiny town of Deering, Alaska's airport, got an urgent call from his local health clinic. An infant needed to be emergency medevac to a hospital, but the lights on the airport's two runways were out of service, making it impossible for planes to take off or land in the dark. If anything were to be done, we were going to have to all get together and do this. So together, Moto and other locals hatched a plan. Plan. The community of 150 people gathering nearly 30 ATVs, cars, and snowmobiles, positioning each one where a runway light would be, allowing the rescue plane to touch down and pick up the little one. It was just unreal seeing that the pilot trusted us to help him land. And we'll have much more on this village of holiday heroes coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrea Fujii, ABC News, New York. Tasty food and other goodies, just some of the fun parts of the holiday season. But you might be surprised to know some of your favorites are actually nutritious. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz has the hidden benefits of holiday treats. Can't you just smell it? Chestnuts, hot chocolate, and pumpkin pie. That may not be poster health foods, but that doesn't mean you can't enjoy. As long as you moderate your intake, that's the catch. You can feel okay about eating these nutrient-packed foods. Chestnuts may not have max protein, but they are rich in fiber, magnesium, folate, vitamin C, and potassium. And they have half the calories of almonds. It's the season for hot cocoa, and yes, it has benefits. The cacao beans used to make the chocolate have flavanols, a key antioxidant. Oxidant. They help reduce inflammation and lower cholesterol. But heads up, skip the instant mixes and make your own using unsweetened cocoa or even melted chocolate. Milk gives you a calcium boost. More often than not, packaged foods and mixes have ingredients that aren't good for you, like added sugars and sodium. So it's usually best to make it fresh. Pumpkin and sweet potatoes are nutritional powerhouses full of vitamins, fiber, and antioxidants. But when they become high, they do lose some super Superpowers. As for eggnog, it's full of saturated fat and sugar. Its Caribbean counterpart, Coquito, is made with coconut milk, but it's still high in saturated fat and sugar. Enjoy, dietitians say, but in small servings. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Well, Stephen's off the rest of the week, so today's uh, traffic reports are a team effort. Just a few cars out there at I-10 and Hackberry. TxDOT reports no accidents right now at 448, Mr. Horn. Mm. Quiet out there, but it's not going to be quiet for much longer. Not in the in the sense that we're going to get precip or rain or anything like that. Uh, but those gusty winds and the temperature drops have. They're going to be pretty shocking, I think. It's so rare that we would need to set aside hat, gloves, scarf. I mean, all the normal winter stuff around here, right? It's true. And yesterday I spent a couple of hours covering some of my plants that, yeah. you know, I, I want to see survive. And it, it took a while because I had to tie everything down really well because I know the winds are going to be strong. So anything you put over those plants, it can blow away. You got to make sure, through, uh, make sure everything's secure with the way these winds are looking. There's a live look outside. And we have clouds right now, 47 degrees at the airport, 46 at Denson, 46 Kelly, 45 at Randolph. It's chilly, but nothing compared to what we're expecting here for the next 24 hours. Satellite picture shows we've got, yes, some clouds trying to build in for now. And I think we'll see a mostly cloudy morning 
until that front hits. And once the front comes through, skies will generally clear. As we look at the big picture here, there is a little bit of snow up in Oklahoma, but that's about the only precip uh, that we're seeing anywhere close to Texas with this front. As you go north, there is a band of snow stretching from Denver over to parts of Kansas where it is just brutally cold at this hour. Negative 42 in Casper. It's negative 16 in Broken Bow, Kansas. The wind chill, though, I'm sorry, Broken Bow, Nebraska. The wind chill is negative 44. Wichita is at 2, negative 23. And we showed you Amarillo, too. But it feels like negative 24 in Amarillo right now. Lubbock's at 15. The wind chill there is negative 5. So that cold air has just hit. That number will continue to plunge. The rest of Texas, well, we're doing okay for now. 42 Abilene, 38 Midland, 44 San Angelo. But this changes within the next several hours. This cold air is on the move, and it's moving quick. So by 9 a.m., the front's through San Angelo. It's through Midland. Temperatures are plunging there. Dallas-Fort Worth, probably uh, through the Metroplex as well. And then by 1 p.m., Front's on our doorstep. So we've got 30s in the Hill Country, 33 Fredericksburg, 38 Kerrville. San Antonio sitting right there in the low 60s. But after 1 o'clock, boom, there goes the cold air. I think by 5 p.m., we're close to freezing here in San Antonio, certainly below freezing in the Hill Country. And the southern parts of our viewing area are starting to feel the chilly air. Then we fast forward to 10 o'clock, 25. 20 in Kerrville, already in the teens in Fredericksburg, and by tomorrow morning, down to 18 here in town. Places like Rock Springs, Kerrville, even colder. Uh, again, bitter cold, and not only that, we've got the gusty winds. So as the front comes through, we'll see the winds really pick up. They'll peak this evening. We could see gusts 40 to 45, and that's going to create some pretty serious wind chills. Uh, the winds try to calm a little bit by tomorrow, but not enough. We still are talking about a pretty significant wind chill by tomorrow morning. And here's a look at the wind chills. By 5 o'clock, that wind chill is 18, by the way. 14 at 7 o'clock. These are your feels like numbers. 6 at midnight. It'll feel like 3 by 7 a.m. tomorrow with a temperature of 18. How about the Christmas weekend? Does it get better? Yes, it does. It'll be very cold Christmas Eve morning, 18 once again. But we're up to 40. And by Christmas morning, 22 up to 49. So Christmas afternoon will be okay, uh, but it will be a cold start. It'll feel very much like Christmas. I think Santa appreciates that. Uh, 35 tomorrow, 40 as we said Saturday, 49 Sunday. The next week we really moderate. I mean, we could be up near 70 by Wednesday, but this is, uh, this is quite a stretch we're dealing with, and it will be one of our coldest Christmases ever. Ever. So now is the time to prepare. Now you have a few hours left to get out there, and uh, if you do want to protect some of your plants, obviously bring the potted plants in. Uh, get all the preps made for your pets. Make sure they're nice and warm, and uh, you know wrap some of the outdoor spigots. I think uh, pipes should be okay for the most part, but you still maybe want to drip. Depends on where your pipes are, if they're exposed, and that sort of thing. All the things you have to think about here within the next several hours. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Justin. Thank you, sir. 453, 47 degrees. Up next, more big numbers for Wednesday on Netflix. Plus, we'll tell you when you can start streaming the sequel to Knives Out. It's almost time for a Knives Out sequel, plus a big turn for Wednesday on Netflix. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. In this very room, a murder will be committed. In just a few hours, you'll be able to start peeling away the layers of Glass Onion, the second Knives Out movie from director Ryan Johnson. Star Daniel Craig is back as Detective Benoit Blanc with a new cast that includes Kate Hudson. And to get everyone acquainted, Craig threw a party. Hey, murder mystery games. I mean, yeah, yeah. Poor actors in a room with free food. And free <laughs> See what happens. See what happens. Yes. <laughs> We had a yeah. great time. That was you know, a fun night. It was like we, we I, I could have stayed there all night long. Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery, is streaming on Netflix Friday. More big numbers for Wednesday. The Netflix series scored just under 6 billion viewing minutes in its first week of release, according to Nielsen, the second biggest streaming week ever, just behind the debut of Stranger Things Season 4. And Avatar The Way of Water just scored the biggest Tuesday box office of the year. The film is expected to top the box office this Christmas weekend. And happy birthday to Megan Trainer. The I Made You Look singer is 29 today, while two-time Oscar nominee Ray Fiennes is 60. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. 
That song from Wednesday is now in my head. Dun, 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 I know, dun, right? Dun, 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 All dun, dun, day dun, dun, long. <laughs> Time now, 4.57, 47 degrees outside. As you know by now, freezing temperatures coming our way today. How local shelters are trying to make sure no one is left out in the cold and how you can help. And if it's too good to be true, it probably is. We have a warning about scammers who are trying to take advantage of last minute Christmas shoppers. Checking trans guide right now. 35 at Walsham, no problem. 37 at Jones Avenue. We'll be back. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Uh, we're looking at some cold temperatures this morning. Across the Texas Panhandle, and that cold air is spreading south. It'll be here by lunchtime. We'll take a look at that forecast for you coming up. A bold and historic trip to Washington for Ukraine's President Zelensky. I'm ABC's Justin Finch with what he's asking of Congress and the new defense package the White House just authorized. And outside with live cam, clouds and cool 47 degrees. It's going to change in a, a big time in less than 24 hours. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, December 22nd. Thanks for waking us, waking up with us and waking up with me right now. <laughs> Hi, Tiffany. Yeah, Hi. Tiffany's in today. Good to have you here. I'm excited. You know that Spanish word that a lot of people are going to be saying the next few days is frío, cold. Más frío. Bien frío. Yeah, that's right. Let's <laughs> go to Justin, get an update on current temperatures and wind chills in places like the uh, Midwest. Uh, these numbers are incredible. We were watching some of the temperature drops yesterday across parts of Wyoming, and now we're seeing that here in Texas. Amarillo went from 41 to 6 in one hour, guys. This front means business, and we've known that for a while. We know that it's going to have some pretty big effects on us here in South Texas, but just to give you some perspective, it is currently negative 13 in Denver with a wind chill of negative 34. Uh, 41, negative 41 in Casper. Look at the wind chill, negative 60. That is uh, pretty incredible. And even in Amarillo, the wind chill is now negative 26, uh, negative 9 in Lubbock. I mean, these numbers, I, it's, it's kind of hard to put them in, in perspective. But as we look at the rest of Texas, we're still in the 40s here. It's, it's chilly, but it's not comparable to what they're seeing up there in the northern part of the state. 30 in Wichita Falls, that number is dropping as we speak. And as I said earlier, we're going to be updating this map just about every 10 minutes or so because these numbers are going to change with the speed of this front. The hourly forecast for us, 46 at 8 o'clock, 57, 11 a.m., 61 noontime. We will see some mostly cloudy skies. That's our peak temperature because right after lunch, this front comes through here and temperatures tumble. We're not going to see the, the huge drops like they're seeing up north, but it will be significant. I think we're down in the 30s by 4 o'clock and probably close to freezing at 5 p.m. Uh, winds will be very strong out of the north. And so we have a wind advisory in effect noon to midnight. Gusts to 45 miles per hour are possible. Wind chill warning in effect. That starts at 6 p.m. Wind chills will fall into the single digits overnight. And then we have a hard freeze warning in effect as well. Lows in the teens both uh, tomorrow morning and Saturday morning. As I said, this front means business. I think we've made the preps. Uh, we'll get through it together, but know that uh, it's going to be a cold stretch. Okay, let's take a look at traffic now. And the roads, 410, Pear and Vital, everything looking good there. 281, Loop 410, uh, smooth sailing there as well. And uh, 281 in San Pedro, no big deal. Uh, we'll go over to the maps real quick and show you that uh, we're seeing basically all green here across uh, San Antonio. And you can see by the pictures there, there's, there's no, good, no big issues. And that's, uh, that's good to see this morning, guys. Thank you, Justin. A fire on San Antonio's north side briefly had a family trapped in their own backyard last night. Happened just after 1 a.m. in the 1500 block of Lee Hall Street near I-10. Firefighters say family members were stuck in the backyard when the overhang on the front porch caught fire. Crews were able to get it out quickly. Once they got there, so far investigators haven't determined a cause. No reports of any injuries. CPS Energy says it will be ready for the drop in temperatures. Part of its response plan includes bringing all of its power sources online before the cold front moves in. We should have all the generation that we need to be able to power our community. Um, and we are having a, one of our power plants come out of the maintenance um, early tomorrow morning. So. CPS Energy says it has winterized its plants since the 2021 freeze. And while precipitation is not expected to be an issue, high winds are still a concern. 
A spokeswoman says its teams are already on standby. You can report down power lines at 210-353-4357. CPS Energy is also holding off on disconnections over the holiday weekend. San Antonio Water System saying now is the time to protect your pipes and faucets with the temperatures expected to plummet this afternoon. Saws is telling everyone to go ahead and wrap those pipes. You can use foam insulation and faucet protectors. If you can't get these particular items, Saw says wrapping pipes with rags or old newspapers will help. Saws also has YouTube tutorials on how to turn off the water at your meter in case your pipes do freeze. For those with no place to call home, local shelters are trying to make room, but they need your help right now. Offices and conference rooms at Haven for Hope will soon become warm shelters from freezing temperatures. Shelter staff will be making the rounds looking for people in encampments who need a warm place to stay nearby at the Salvation Army. The shelter is at capacity, but there's plenty of goodwill and desire to help. All local shelters that help the homeless are in need of winter gear, blankets and towels. So our biggest need right now is winter coats um, for men and women. They can be new or gently used. If they have a, a new blanket or if they're able to provide a, a warm blanket for someone to please uh, bring it here to Area Command and they can bring it to 521 West Elmira Street. This is just the beginning of the long winter ahead. Shelter staff says once the holidays are over, they see a significant decrease in the number of volunteers. So anytime you can help, they would appreciate it. Well, instead of sharing Christmas with their teenage boys, two San Antonio families are making funeral arrangements after a deadly hit and run crash. Now they're asking for help to find the driver responsible. 15 year old Jordan Canedo and 17 year old James Solis were hit and killed in the 2700 block of Rigsby Avenue nearly a week ago as they came back from Christmas shopping. The families are now relying on each other as they seek justice. You, you took two innocent lives. They didn't even get to be grown. They're not grown ups. You just left. My little boy died on that street. I don't know how I'm holding on. According to SAPD, they have no suspects or witnesses in this case at this time, which is why both families are asking anyone with information to please come forward. All right, 507, now to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's historic visit to Washington, D.C. Zelensky thanking the United States for its support and urging Congress not to waver in its resolve. As ABC's Justin Finch reports, Zelensky's appeal comes as the White House authorized a new weapons package. Following in the footsteps of British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky addressing Congress and seeking to cement a wartime alliance. Our two nations are allies in this battle. Zelensky framing Ukraine's fight against Russia as one for the future of common freedom and shared values. The president thanking the U.S. for its continued support and calling on Congress not to waver. Your money is not charity. It's an investment in the global security and democracy that we handle in the most responsible way. Congress now mulling over a $1.7 trillion government spending bill, which allocates $45 billion in additional aid for Ukraine. We understand in our bones that Ukraine's fight is part of something much bigger. Just before Zelensky's arrival, the White House approved another military aid package, including an advanced surface-to-air Patriot missile system. We need to be working with the Ukrainians to give them the ability to go on the offensive, because you cannot win a war on the defensive. Patriot missile system, very important. But some military experts say it may not be helpful against drones that Russia has been using to cripple Ukraine's electric grid. In Congress, Zelensky's remarks were warmly received. There aren't many moments like this. Uh, I think everyone in the room understood the sense of history involved. And Russia warning the U.S. supplying Ukraine with that Patriot missile system would be seen as a provocative step. But President Biden pushing ahead, saying the move isn't escalatory, but defensive. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Well, here at home today, an H-E-B tradition hits a milestone as it hosts its 30th annual Feast of Sharing. The annual community event expected to feed more than 10,000 people at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center. All right, so doors open today at 11 a.m. The event ends at 3 in the afternoon. The convention center will be filled with good food, live music, activities for the family, and, of course, Mr. Santa Claus. Via is offering free rides to and from the feast. Feast of Sharing is free. 
and open to the public. Time now, 509, 46 degrees outside. Tis the season for scams, how cyber thieves are trying to steal your money if you're trying to get those last minute Christmas gifts. Up next, why San, San Antonio Public Works says a $9 million infrastructure project won't be ready by spring as was initially expected. Outside with live cam, the count, uh, countdown is on to those blast of winter temperatures. Hope you are ready. The, if, you, if you're not, sun should be up soon. You can wrap up your preparations. Update on the forecast with Justin is coming up. So I was really fortunate to be able to spend my Christmases with both my maternal and my paternal grandparents. And so my mom's parents, they live up in Iowa. And so every Christmas there was at least some snow on the ground. And so we were able to go sledding and it was just a blast. So that's what our tradition was with them. And then for my dad's parents, my Sue mama and my daddy doc, what we would do is instead of having stockings, we would have nicely knit, homemade knit stockings, but we wouldn't stuff them. Instead, we would have these giant uh, plastic containers, like moving containers, and every individual would have one of those giant containers and that was your stocking. I wanna wish you a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Welcome back, 514. Earlier this month, business owners and neighbors shared how the phase one of the North New Braunfels project is affecting their lives. Crews broke ground late last year to update the area's infrastructure. San Antonio City Public Works says the $9 million project will not be complete by spring. A spokesperson says weather was a factor. However, traffic was the major issue. It is mainly because this is a very narrow road and if we want to maintain two-way traffic, it makes it difficult to install utilities safely with two-way traffic from cars and via buses. Crews are anticipating more delays with today's freeze, but the city has confirmed the project will be complete by fall next year. 515, 46 degrees. Still ahead, a big possible win against those pesky robocalls. We'll tell you about what could be the largest fine ever. And we'll tell you when Netflix will start streaming its new Nike Training Club classes. <laughs> hey, I met that guy. <laughs> We wore the same coat to a party. And I was like, twins! And then I told him about this 24-7 waffle place. Waffles, anytime. That's just as great as Geico's 24-7 claim service. Anytime, you're on the phone or online. And I was like, wish you can get waffles on the phone. <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> Seriously, he was crying. <laughs> and then we got waffles. Yeah, waffles! <laughs> Geico, 24-7 claim service. Suffering from sinus congestion, especially at night? Try Vicks Sinex for instant relief that lasts up to 12 hours. Vicks Sinex targets congestion at the source, relieving nasal congestion and sinus pressure by reducing swelling in the sinuses. Try Vicks Sinex. When it's a precious surprise, it's more than a gift. I get to see what's under. In today's Tech Bites, a warning about a shopping scam. Authorities say thieves are out to take advantage of last-minute holiday buyers with bogus deals. Shoppers are being cautioned against emails with fake surveys and deals on designer products. The FCC has proposed a $300 million fine against a robocall campaign that was pushing extended car warranties. It would be the agency's largest fine ever. The FCC says the scheme is run by two California men who racked up 5 billion calls in just three months. And finally, Netflix will start streaming Nike Training Club classes just in time for New Year's resolutions. The streaming service is releasing 30 hours of exercise sessions, which include strength training and yoga led by Nike trainers. I really hope this works out. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Punny or not so punny? What do you think? It's okay? <laughs> Thumbs down, just <laughs> <laughs> outside right now with Transkai cameras around town. No accidents to report. We're not expecting any major problems right now. Uh, could be a whole different story by tomorrow morning with those winds whipping 
around South Texas. A lot of people are going to be traveling too, so. Yeah. Yeah, we've got to keep a close eye on that. It's not going to be a real problem here across Texas as we've been seeing, but the rest of the country, it's a whole different ball game because these temperatures are so cold and we've got snow involved. Uh, so I want to show you the travel map if you do have plans to uh, head out today. Uh, the, the Midwest and the Great Lakes are going to be a real mess. You're talking about places like Chicago, Milwaukee, Cincinnati. That's where there's going to be some huge impacts. So far, there have not been any delays, not any that I've seen on the map, but that could change a little bit later today. This all transitions towards the northeast as you get into tomorrow and then uh, not as bad as we get into Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. So that's the good news. It's really the next couple of days that are going to be real problems. But as we look at uh, kind of the summary over the next uh, today through Saturday, it's going to be the northern tier states that really take on the brunt of the uh, wintry weather. Now we'll feel the temperatures here. We just won't have the wintry weather, which, you know, at this point is fine uh, considering uh, where we've been in years past, right? Uh, right now we've got uh, mostly cloudy to cloudy skies, 47 degrees, 2.8, 43 calm winds. And as we look at visibility, there have been a few places reporting some fog, namely Gonzales, where visibility is down about two and a half miles. There could be some fog that builds in briefly this morning. I don't think it'll be a huge issue, but we'll keep an eye on it. This is the map that I told you we'll, we'll keep updating here every 10 minutes or so, and we're still seeing some changes here. Uh, Casper, Wyoming, the wind chill there is negative 60. Uh, we're now down to 11 in Lubbock, where the wind chill is negative 9. Amarillo now down to negative 1. Wind chill is negative 28. Just incredible. They were in the 40s just several hours ago. So you can see the impact that this front has made. Wichita Falls, that number is falling quickly. They're down to 24 now. Midland, Abilene, Dallas, next in line to get this front. And that probably happens within the next uh, three to four hours. And then eventually it makes its way down to San Antonio. We're sitting at 47 right now, yes. But that changes as uh, we head into uh, the afternoon. It's 9 o'clock. There you see Dallas, San Angelo, Midland. Temperatures dipping. And then by 1 p.m., I think it's going to be around that period, noon to 2 p.m., where we'll see the front come through San Antonio. So 62 at that point, but 30s in the hill country, and then boom, the temperatures just fall. 32 by 5 p.m., we're down to freezing. Wind chills are already kicking in at this point, and you're already in the 20s in the hill country. The entire area gets this bitter cold air by 10 p.m. We're down to 25. Teens already starting to show up in places like Fredericksburg, and by tomorrow morning, we're down to 18. The winds will still be somewhat strong, so the wind chill is going to be in the single digits tomorrow morning. Wind gust forecast, we could see gusts 40 to 45. That poses a real problem, too. And by the way, winds peak somewhere around uh, this evening, so late afternoon, evening hours into very early tomorrow morning. Uh, the wind chill forecast, even at 5 o'clock, I mentioned we're down to freezing, but the wind chill, the feels like number's 18, feels like 14 at 7 p.m. Then we get wind chills in single digits by tomorrow morning. That uh, That is where it gets a little dangerous. You don't really want to be outside for long periods of time with those kinds of numbers. Just stay indoors tonight uh, and enjoy a, a movie or something and stay warm. 49 degrees uh, for Christmas Day by the afternoon. So we're starting to warm up as soon as Christmas, but those morning lows are still pretty brutal. 18 Saturday morning, 22 for Christmas morning. And the extended forecast, it does warm up next week. We're back in the 50s and 60s by uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. But next few days, layers, if you're going to be outside, make those preps now. You still have a few more hours to get those done. Cover the spigots. Make sure your pipes are in good working order. You cover some of those exposed pipes. You may want to drip. Uh, drip your faucets to keep things moving and keep the cabinets open and those sort of things with those kind of temperatures. Great tips there. Yeah. Thank you, Justin. Right now, 524, 46 degrees. Up next, a Netflix hit nabs a massive streaming debut and Black Panther Wakanda Forever gets close, closer to Oscar gold. Welcome back. Viewers can't seem to get enough of Wednesday Adams. Plus, Fandango reveals some of the most anticipated movies of 2023. Here's CNN's Rick Damagella with the Hollywood Minute. She's been smothering me with hospitality. I hope to return the favor in her sleep. Nielsen reports Wednesday was watched for nearly six billion minutes during the Netflix hits first week on the streaming platform. This marks the second biggest week of streaming ever recorded by the data measurement firm, topped only by the most recent season of Stranger Things. 
lost. Black Panther Wakanda Forever becomes an Oscars favorite. The Marvel sequel snagged spots on all five of the Oscars official shortlists for which it was eligible, tying its lead with German war drama All Quiet on the Western Front. The 95th Oscars will be handed out March 12th. But no matter what happens next, galaxy still needs its guardians. The third volume in the hit Guardians of the Galaxy franchise beat out fellow Marvel properties like Spider-Man and Ant-Man to top Fandango's survey of the most anticipated movies of 2023. Fans will get more of their favorite anti-heroes on May 5th. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Okay, 528, 46 degrees. The National Weather Service is calling the approaching winter weather a once-in-a-generation type event. We'll update you on the winter weather alerts in place for more than 90 million people. Plus Bethlehem, a popular place this time of year, but not that Bethlehem. We're talking about a post office in Connecticut that's seeing a huge influx of letters. And a scaly monster is pulled out of a local lake. We'll tell you about the battle to get it ashore. Communities across the state are about to see temperatures that they haven't experienced in a decade or more. The nation gets set for today's big winter weather event. How the storm is already affecting travel for many. And a look outside with live cam. 46 degrees outside. Justin is tracking the forecast here in San Antonio. And a good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is December 22nd. Uh, before we jump into weather, I want to remind folks, if you can't avoid Loop 410 in the Marbach area, especially the southbound lanes of 410, it is a, it's bumper to bumper out there right now, and police, a lot of police activity, so uh, avoid that area if at all possible. Yeah, it's closed right there at 410 and 90. Okay. Uh, so that's going to cause some traffic issues throughout the morning until uh, things get uh, cleared up around there. Uh, of course, we're also tracking what's going on temperature-wise. Uh, it's uh, it's I don't want to say it's record breaking, but th this is some really cold air that is plunging uh, into Texas. I do want to say once again, I, we've said it at nauseum, but this is not going to be like 2021. It's not the same situation, but it is going to get very cold. And I want to show you some of the numbers that we've been tracking uh, this morning as uh, we go up in the parts of, say, Wyoming and uh, Nebraska and Kansas. These numbers are just brutal. Negative 41. Feels like negative 60 with the wind chill, and we've been updating these uh, pretty regularly. And uh, Amarillo and Lubbock, they've been hit by the front now. Negative one in Amarillo, the wind chill is negative 28, negative nine in Lubbock. Uh, the rest of the state's still doing okay right now. We're at 47, but that front is scheduled to be here right after lunch. So think one o'clock ish, and once it hits, you'll know temperatures will drop dramatically. You'll get gusty winds, and it will feel very very different. So the KSAT 12-hour forecast: 46 degrees at eight o'clock, cloudy. By 9 a.m., 50. We're up to 61 noontime, but uh, then temperatures just fall off a ledge. 45 degrees at 3 o'clock, 39, 4 p.m., 32 by 5 p.m., and we're already talking wind chills at that point. So to go over our, our advisories again, wind advisory, noon until midnight, gusts to 40 to 45, we think, out of the north. So also another factor to keep in mind in all of this, Mount Cedar's probably going to jump up a little bit. Uh, wind chill warning. That begins at 6 p.m. Wind chills will be in the single digits. And then we have a hard freeze warning lows in the teens Friday and Saturday morning. So a lot to look at here. Hopefully you've made your preps. If you haven't, you still have some time left to do that. Again, right after lunch is when that front is set to hit here in San Antonio, guys. And hey, one last look uh, at traffic. We want to take you out uh, to uh, 410 in Marbach. Once again, this is where the highway is closed. Uh, and it's right there at 410 and 90 and everyone is being forced to exit here. So just know that this is going to be a, a really long wait if you're traveling in those areas. This is southbound, I believe, right? 410 that we're looking at here. And uh, yeah, that is uh, that is bumper to bumper traffic and it's not moving much. That is the one trouble spot we have out there at this hour, guys. Justin, thank you. National Weather Service says many in the U.S. will be experiencing once in a generation winter weather event this week. As Amy Kiley reports, the storm is already affecting several states. The National Weather Service is calling it a once in a generation type event. It's predicting a bomb cyclone will hit the U.S. today into tomorrow. That's a brutal storm that rapidly intensifies in 24 hours. The service has issued winter weather alerts for more than 90 million people. 
Visibility isn't great, and then when your car fogs up, um, it's really not good. Now it's just getting white out. The Weather Service says temperatures could be life-threatening in parts of the country today. It's put more than 87 million Americans under wind chill alerts. Drivers in some parts of the country are being extra cautious because salt can't melt ice in extreme cold. I had ice built up on my wipers, so it's taken a couple of times to clear them off and scrape them. Frostbite isn't the only danger for people on foot, according to this spokesperson for the National Park Service. Uh, there's still ice in some of the trees, so please, please, please look up. Meanwhile, some holiday air travelers are dealing with delays and cancellations. We sort of have a general range of what may happen, but what will happen remains to be seen. Forecasters say even southern states like Alabama, Tennessee and Georgia will see wind chills below zero this week. Communities across the state are about to see temperatures that they haven't experienced in a decade or more. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Negotiations over a government funding bill appear to have stalled overnight. Senators have been at an impasse over an amendment from Utah GOP Senator Mike Lee to extend the Trump era border policy known as Title 42. That allows migrants to be turned back at the border. The Biden administration earlier this week told the Supreme Court it should reject an emergency bid by a group of GOP led states to keep the controversial border restriction in effect while legal challenges play out. Democrats are concerned the amendment may pass. That could cause the spending bill to be sunk in the Democratic-led House, which must pass the bill after it clears the Senate. Some lawmakers suggested Congress might need to vote on another short-term funding bill to avoid a government shutdown. Three buses carrying migrants from Texas have arrived in Philadelphia. Workers were waiting to greet the 140 asylum seekers who were given winter coats and taken to a welcome center. Many of them also connected with family members already in the U.S. Some children were among the migrants. Philadelphia is just one city Governor Greg Abbott has used public funds to transport migrants to. He has said it is meant to ease pressure on his state. If you want to live like Santa Claus, plan to pay a pretty penny for a North Pole pad. Zillow says Chris Kringle's property is now potentially worth over a million dollars, one million one hundred fifty four thousand and one hundred thirty seven dollars to be exact. That's a jump in value of over 12 percent for the past year. According to the real estate listing website, St. Nick's home sits on 25 acres and was constructed in the 1800. It features three bedrooms, two bathrooms, a floor to ceiling fireplace, accommodations for the elves and a gourmet kitchen for baking. Zillow first listed the property six years ago for just over $650,000. Since then, the site says the property's price has soared 77%. Just over a million. It's okay. It's okay. Right, nothing. All right, 538, 47 degrees outside. Still ahead, we'll tell you about a unique holiday tradition in a small Connecticut town that people from all over the nation are excited about right before Christmas. And there's nothing fishy about this next story. Up next, how a local angler reeled in a big one at a local lake. Outside with live cam waiting on that Arctic plunge, and it is coming. Again, if you're just now joining us, wait do you see some of the temperatures happening right now up in the Texas handheld. You won't believe this. That's coming up. 541, welcome back. The pictures were the hook in this next story. A big, though not record-breaking, big fish hauled from local waters. Garrett Berger talked with the heroic novice who battled the scaly monster of the mid-sized lake. Look at the size of that. <gasps> Ricky Villasenor almost needed a bigger boat. Pulling this red drum behemoth out of Victor Bronick Lake earlier this month. 33 inches, a monster. Mm. Sorry, sore throat. And when I got it onto the boat, I couldn't even, I couldn't even pick it up. You know, he was like, let me take a picture. And I'm like, I can't pick it up. <laughs> Every legendary sea creature requires a name. And since Kraken was taken, Via Senor went with... Phil, we'll call him Phil for the Neff. Via Senor hooked mighty Phil while out on Peronic Lake with her friend and fishing guide, Anthony Soler. On average, uh, what I catch there, 27 to 28 inch would be considered big. That's considerably larger and, and a heck of a bite for sure. Not a fisherman myself, but I know those you are are going to want to know what she used. So it was a rattlesnake lure. Rattle trap. Uh, 20 pound braided hair. Braid. And uh, 30 pound Yosemite leader. Yozuri. The, that stuff. Fellow fisherman today cast a respectful eye upon a photo of her catch. Oh, wow. That thing's massive. Ooh, man. When was that? 
including Mark Garza, who pulled out what he said was his personal best from the league, right in front of us. The 24 inches. But there have been bigger catches than Vias and yours 33 incher, as recently as Tuesday, according to Garza's fishing app. This one is 35. And the lake record is 40 inches. Still, it's a catch to be proud of. It's my record breaking fish. It's my personal record. <laughs> and one she enjoyed in the form of fish tacos. We got home, filleted him, cooked him, and he was in our bellies. The noblest of ends for a noble aquatic monster like Bill Garrett Burge, KSA 12 News. Wow. Dramatic music, too. Oh, Garrett. <laughs> Garrett Berger's best story of the year, save for the end of the year. Bravo. Bravo. Amazing. Time right now, 543, 47 degrees. This special pet from the San Antonio Humane Society is standing by next to hopefully be able to keep you warm at a new home this winter. And again, we're putting out the word, uh, try to avoid southbound Loop 410 past Marbach. Uh, the road is closed southbound 410 at Highway 90. It has been for hours and remains that way as of 543. Is she trying to sing Christmas girls? She is. Yes. Yeah, so so she Merry from Christmas. San Antonio Maya. Humane Society. Who's a little, little, just a handful <laughs> of them in vinegar? Good this is Maya. Hi, Maya. Uh, Maya is probably less, definitely less than a year old. Puppy, a uh, little bit of a kind of a terrier mix. Um, lots of energy, wants to give lots of puppy <laughs> kisses <laughs> this morning. I know, you're saying Merry Christmas, everybody. And that's why puppies need <laughs> lots of toys, lots <laughs> yes. of energy, lots of exercise. Yep, yes. look, see, definitely, ooh, definitely ooh, wants ooh. to get out and play. <laughs> and make sure they don't chew on the calendar. No, so, don't chew on our no. calendar. So this is our calendar that we have for sale. Um, it is featuring all of our uh, sweet animals that have been adopted. It's $15. Yeah. It's available at our Fredericksburg location and it's a great stocking, stocking stuffer. So Took the words out of my mouth. Yes, perfect for the <laughs> animal lover there. Yes. And a great way to help out the, uh, the Humane Society. Yes, all the proceeds go back to us and, and to our sweet little pets. So come on by. Wonderful. <laughs> and uh, your hours for Christmas week are? Um, we are open like normal, the 12 to 7. So okay. we are closed on uh, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Okay. But yeah, all right. Very good. If you would like to adopt, if you want to get one of these <laughs> nifty little calendars, or if you want just a little ball of energy here, head on over to the uh, San Antonio Humane Society, 4804 Fredericksburg Road. Don't chew on my fingers. 226 <laughs> Merry love it. Christmas, dear. Merry Christmas. <laughs> it's an active pup. A small post office in a Connecticut town being swamped with holiday rush that's because of a tradition people are sending christmas cards from the town of bethlehem to get a specially designed postmark with the town's name the postmaster and his staff has added a special postmark by hand to letters and cards since 1938 holiday well wishers choose from 87 different options designed by local residents artists and school kids the designs are only available from the day after thanksgiving to december 31st the postmaster expects to stamp about 85 to 90,000 postmarks by hand this year. What a tradition. And then look again with traffic. Outside it's 47 degrees, but we're looking at right now at loop 410 at Marbach southbound. We're seeing bumper to bumper traffic, so please avoid that area if possible. That's right. People are asking me on social media what's happening out there. Uh, we can tell you there's some police activity, but by policy, that's all we are going to say about this incident right now. We are still monitoring the situation, but again, southbound 410 uh, is closed there approaching Highway 90. When we get an update, we'll let you know. Yeah, it looks like things have changed a little bit because it was it looked like it was one lane earlier. Now we're seeing a lot of cars trying to merge once again. So yeah, it's just a just kind of a parking lot out there. We actually have it on the map here. I did I did want to show you kind of give you an idea of exactly uh, where that is and where that slowdown is uh, with regards to. Uh, uh, the the slowdown there you've seen in Fort and Marbach. You we, got it on your weather map. We can go over to the weather maps. Yeah, okay. and I'll show you there on. Uh, on the map, there we go, and zoom in there. It's over right at 90 and 410, and it's southbound. That's where the issue is, and that's where the issue is going to be uh, potentially for longer. So you just uh, just want to avoid it if at all possible, really that entire area if you can. And that really is the one trouble spot that we've been seeing for most of the morning. Okay, now let's talk weather. And, of course, the big story today is going to be this massive cold front, which is already making headway into the Texas Panhandle. We showed you earlier it's negative 1 in Amarillo right now. They were in the 40s earlier. Dropped like a rock. 
once that front came through. Out ahead of it, we are seeing a little bit of fog here and there. Gonzalez is reporting some lower visibility, nothing here in San Antonio. And right now we've just got mostly cloudy skies. 47 degrees at the airport, 46 Kelly, 46 in Randolph, light winds. That, of course, changes later today. As we look at the satellite picture, you can see some of the clouds. This isn't going to be a big deal. Once the, the front comes through, in fact, we'll clear out. So you'll see sun this afternoon, but boy, will it be cold. Uh, there is a little bit of snow up there around Oklahoma City. Parts of the Texas Panhandle may see a few flurries, but uh, the bitter cold is on the move. It should be through San Angelo, Midland, and Dallas by 9 a.m., starting to move into the hill country at this point. And then by midday, I'd say around 1 o'clock is when we can probably expect it here in San Antonio. You'll see it's in the 30s there around 1 o'clock in Fredericksburg, but out ahead of it, we're talking 60s. So that, that is that rapid change in temperature. By 5 o'clock, we're already down to freezing. Gusty winds are in place. It is going to feel so very different. So just be prepared. If you have plans to go out tonight, know that it is going to be brutally cold. And by 10 o'clock, we're down to 25. Already starting to see teens in the hill country. By tomorrow morning, 18 is the forecast low, but down to 12 in Fredericksburg, 13 Rock Springs, even Eagle Pass down to 21. This is a hard freeze. And, you know, I talked a little bit about this yesterday. A lot of times here we ease into our freezing temperatures. You know, we have a couple mornings where we're down to 31, 30. Not this year. We haven't had a freeze yet in San Antonio. We're going from not having a freeze to 18. So the plants are going to be kind of shocked by this. If uh, you haven't wrapped some of your sensitive plants, I would, I would do that now. We uh, got to talk about the winds too. Gusts will pick up. This is the forecast gust around 6 o'clock, 36 here in San Antonio, 38 the gust there at Fair Oaks Ranch. And I think we could see some gusts as high as 40 to 45 during that probably 9 to midnight range. Winds are going to be howling. You'll hear them outside. And that means wind chills are going to be pretty brutal. And going even into tomorrow morning where wind gusts will still be up around 20 to 25. It's not until midday tomorrow that those winds finally subside. So the temperature and wind chill map here, as I mentioned at 5 o'clock, we're at 32, but it feels like 18. At 7 o'clock, we're at 28, feels like 14, and it just steps down from there. I think we could be in single-digit wind chills as early as 10 p.m., and that lasts all the way into tomorrow morning. Just uh, not fun to be outside. And, and check on your neighbors. If they don't have central heating, this is that time period where you want to make sure everyone's doing okay. Obviously, the pets are coming inside, and uh, you can make those preps as far as wrapping your spigots and some of those exposed pipes especially. Uh, maybe drip some of your faucets if you feel like that, uh, that's going to be a problem. So uh, now's the time. And as we look forward to Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, 40 on Saturday, 49 Christmas Day. So in the afternoons, we are above freezing, but those mornings will be cold still over the weekend. It's not until next week that we do finally start to see a warm up. So uh, there's a look at it all laid out. 35 tomorrow for an afternoon high, even though it's sunny. 40 Saturday, 49 Sunday, and then 50s and 60s next week. And I look outside right no at Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. We looked up the temperatures a yes. while ago. It was what? Like minus? It's got to be like negative 30, yeah. somewhere in that range, I yeah. would imagine. Yeah, I think it was minus 24 or 25. Yeah. So And then minus, take another 10 degrees off for where the wind chills right now. There was a person. Walking. One person, Why? one brave person up there. In <laughs> they're, right, they're right at the crosswalk. There you yeah, go. They're frozen a, in place. That's a brave soul. But as you can see, it could be dangerous, very dangerous conditions. Look at the lights. Yeah, you're right. Beautiful so. spot, though, this time of year. That's for sure. If you can brave the cold. 553, 47 degrees. And these are your lotto numbers. Whoa. We jumped ahead right to Powerball. This is 12, 15, 24, 34, 59, 14. That's your Powerball. And pick three numbers, zero, five, six, fireball of one, daily four, seven, nine, eight, seven, fireball zero. Cash five, four, 14, 17, 20, 31, in your Lotto, Texas, two, four, eight, 13, 26, 47.
Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the massive holiday weather emergency and travel chaos. Our team is tracking the blizzard conditions and bitter cold temperatures that are wreaking havoc on Christmas plans. Hundreds of flights already canceled. We have the latest. And the American woman just released from a Russian prison after nearly a year returning to the U.S. on the same day as Brittany Griner, sharing her harrowing story of abuse in her first national TV interview. Those stories and much more coming up right here on GMA. Well, ahead in the next hour, GMSA asking for more money at work can be a daunting task. Coming up, we'll show you the do's and don'ts when it comes to asking your boss for a raise in the new year. But our big story this morning, and it's been like this almost all night long, a major road closure does continue. Avoid 410 South over by Ingram and Marbach. If you can exit the highway well before Highway 90, the, remain, the road remains closed in that area. Again, southbound 410 at Highway 90. Look at the huge backup of traffic. Ahead this hour, a family on the city's north side loses their home and some of their pets after an overnight fire. We'll take a look at the damage. A bold and historic trip to Washington for Ukraine's President Zelensky. I'm ABC's Justin Finch with what he's asking of Congress and the new defense package the White House just authorized. Brutally cold temperatures are still headed our way and local shelters are doing what they can to help people with no place to get out of that kind of weather, but they need your help. We'll tell you what their biggest needs are right now. And then look outside with live cam, 47 degrees outside. Lots of people are gonna be heading out this holiday weekend. We have your full forecast in just a little bit. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is December 22nd. Good to have Tiffany Huertas here this morning. I'm excited. Buenos dias. Get your cafecito ready. Have everything hot chocolate to go. You, where do you see some of these temperatures up in the Texas Panhandle right now? Justin is in for Mike and uh, we have more on that. And we're also tracking a huge huge incident that's got 410 South closed over on the west side. Mm -hmm. Busy on the roads, but at the cold front really is the big story. I mean, man, these uh, these numbers are just incredible. Uh, we're seeing wind chill values drop to uh, negative 30, negative 40 in some cases, uh, negative 60s. You get up into Wyoming. That is the wind chill right now, negative 61. The temperature is negative 38. And as we look down towards Texas, Amarillo right now, negative one, wind chill, negative 28, nine in Lubbock, negative 12, the feels like number. So this air, this cold air, it means business and it is scheduled to arrive in San Antonio. We think just after lunch. So around one o'clock today is when you'll start to feel the effects of this front. In the meantime, we're at 48. So it's chilly out there, but nothing like it's going to be later tonight and into tomorrow. So your KSAT 12 hourly forecast, 50 at nine o'clock, cloudy. Mostly cloudy at noon. Then the front comes through, clears things out. Temperatures drop like a rock. 45 degrees at 3 o'clock. We're down to 39 at 4 o'clock. 32. Freezing by 5 p.m. Northeasterly winds anywhere from 20 to 30 miles per hour. Gusts up to 40, and that will make it feel all that much colder. Wind advisory in effect. Noon to midnight gusts to 45, as we said. Wind chill warning begins at 6 p.m. Wind chills can be in the single digits. And then a hard freeze warning lows in the teens Friday and Saturday morning. So those are the advisories and warnings we have in place right now. Make those preps now. You only have a few hours left before that front gets here. Um, right now, 48 degrees as we said at the airport. Southwesterly winds about 5 miles per hour. And we're going to switch gears now and talk traffic. We'll go over to Transguide now. And you can see uh, the, the stack up that we have here at Highway 90, uh, 410 at Highway 90. Uh, there's been an incident there and the road is completely blocked off. This is southbound 410 and you can see it is basically at a standstill. This is not a good situation. You'll want to avoid it if you can because that is going to cause some major headaches this morning. We continue to see this stack up. If we can, we'll go back over to the maps and I'll show you where this issue is at this hour. And again, as I said, it's around the 410 uh, 90 area where uh, we have the problem. And it probably will last a while longer uh, throughout the morning. And it's uh, again right there on the city's west side where that backup and it will continue to stack up there along 410. We'll keep you posted up throughout the rest of the morning. We've also got some updates on this front. The latest here in just a little bit. Mark. 
Justin, thank you for updates on both. New this morning, cleanup underway after an overnight fire on the north side at a home. It happened a little after 1130 last night on Briarcrest, not far from Bulverde and Wetmore Roads. Crew said the family was not home at the time. They say the flames were sparked by a heating lamp that was used for the family's chickens in their backyard. The chickens were killed. A dog and cat got out of the house. The home is considered a total loss. The brutal cold weather is almost here, and for those who don't have a warm place to call home, local shelters are trying to make room. Offices and conference rooms at Haven for Hope will soon become warm shelters for freezing temperatures. Shelter staff will be making the rounds looking for people in encampments who need a warm place to stay. Nearby at the Salvation Army, the shelter is at capacity, but there's plenty of goodwill and desire to help. All local shelters that help the homeless say they could use some help. So our biggest need right now is winter coats um, for men and women. They can be new or gently used. If they have a, a new blanket or if they're able to provide a, a warm blanket for someone to please uh, bring it here to area command and they can bring it to 521 West Elmira Street. This is just the beginning of the long winter ahead. Shelter staff says once the holidays are over, they see a significant decrease in the number of volunteers. So anytime you can help, they would appreciate it. Right now, 605 turning now to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's historic visit to Washington, D.C. Zelensky is now the first wartime leader in generations to address our Congress. ABC's Justin Finch has more from Washington. Following in the footsteps of British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky addressing Congress and seeking to cement a wartime alliance. Our two nations are allies in this battle. Zelensky framing Ukraine's fight against Russia as one for the future of common freedom and shared values. The president thanking the U.S. for its continued support and calling on Congress not to waver. Your money is not charity is an investment in the global security and democracy that we handle in the most responsible way. Congress now mulling over a $1.7 trillion government spending bill, which allocates $45 billion in additional aid for Ukraine. We understand in our bones that Ukraine's fight is part of something much bigger. Just before Zelensky's arrival, the White House approved another military aid package, including an advanced surface-to-air Patriot missile system. We need to be working with the Ukrainians to give them the ability to go on the offensive, because you cannot win a war on the defensive. Patriot missile system, very important. But some military experts say it may not be helpful against drones that Russia has been using to cripple Ukraine's electric grid. In Congress, Zelensky's remarks were warmly received. There aren't many moments like this. Uh, I think everyone in the room understood the sense of history involved. And Russia warning the U.S. supplying Ukraine with that Patriot missile system would be seen as a provocative step. But President Biden pushing ahead, saying the move isn't escalatory, but defensive. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. In your morning consumer headlines, consumer confidence hit an eight month high in December, but persistent recession fears are leading fewer households to plan big ticket purchases over the next six months. Experts say more Americans are taking vacations through June of 2023. This is their expectations of more inflation fell to the lowest level since September 2021, mostly reflecting lower gas prices. It's the season of giving and Amazon customers can again give a $5 tip compliments of the company to drivers who made their most recent delivery. The popular Alexa Thank My Driver program was so successful when it launched earlier this month that Amazon had to shut it down after just one day. The company says this time will continue the campaign through the first million customer thank yous. A new warning about a shopping scam. Authorities say thieves are out to take advantage of last minute holiday buyers with bogus deals. Shoppers are being cautioned against emails with fake surveys and deals on designer products. The FCC has proposed a $300 million fine against the robocall campaign that was pushing extended car warranties. It would be the agency's largest fine ever. The FCC says the scheme is run by two California 
men who racked up five billion calls in just three months. Netflix will start streaming Nike Training Club classes just in time for New Year's resolutions. The streaming service releasing uh, 30 hours of exercise sessions, including strength training and yoga led by Nike trainers. And happening today, an HEB tradition hits a milestone as it hosts its 30th annual Feast of Sharing. The annual community event is expected to feed more than 10,000 people at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center. Doors open at 11 a.m. The event ends at 3 in the afternoon. The convention center will be filled with food, music, activities for the family and Santa. Hundreds of volunteers are ready to serve. VIA is offering free rides to and from the feast. The Feast of Sharing is free and open to the public. HEB has been hosting this event since 1989. 609, 47 degrees. Much more to come on GMSA, including the nightmare people at airports and on the roadways could be in for as the severe weather makes its way across parts of the U.S. That's coming up a little later. And just ahead, why there are new calls for Congressman-elect George Santos of New York to resign. And outside with live cam, 47 degrees. Traffic in this area is, is running smoothly, but we know on southbound Loop 410 at Marbach, Please avoid that area. Justin has your forecast coming up.